Women are discriminated against every day. I just got through giving a speech on the subject and the statistics on it. You can look in your teaching profession and you'll see how many teachers there are, but how many principals are there, how many administrators are there. You can go to a college graduation exercise and you'll see 25 uh, men seated in their glorious robes on the head platform leading the university, and you're lucky if you see one woman. She might be the dean of girls or something. But what can be done? Women are, you can have this Equal Rights Amendment where it then becomes pointed out in the Constitution that this is absolutely unconstitutional and women can then put up a fight about it. With your help, a beautiful, clean gallus is as simple as A, B, C, D. Or maybe better said, it's as simple as several hundred young people getting out and walking the bar ditches along our streets and highways. Maybe that's how simple this is. This particular group at White Rock Lake, I understand, was organized by Mrs. Betty Swoboda. How many young people do you have working today? We haven't had a registration on them, but I think we have probably 80 or 90 out here. But they're all over town. This is just our nucleus group here. How often do you try to do this? Well, this is our first time, but we hope to continue it. Maybe every two months or something like that. I'd like to talk to some of these young people if I can, very quickly. Let me talk to you. What is your name? Gary Jordan. Gary, why are you out here? I think that America should be cleaned up, and I don't like the way it looks right now. And I uh, joined a college club at Hillcrest, and I think that we need to clean up America. All right, they said it. It's as easy as A, B, C, D, but it's also as easy as E, F, G, and right on through Z, because there is someone whose name starts with every letter of the alphabet, and I think therein lies our problem. This is Jim Mitchell, Channel 8 News on the Move at White Rock Lake. <laughs> mean a great deal to them. The idea is to let the community know that there are some young concerned men living in the black community who are trying to assist them to bring about a better world. How will the MCAs work? The MCAs will work through the advisory council of the Dallas Negro Chamber of Commerce. Our I am staff coordinator for the Dallas Alliance for Minority Enterprise. We are attempting to coordinate all of the minority efforts being made in the city of Dallas. Then I will be somewhat of a liaison between the MCAs and the MBAs and other organizations within the city. Tell me this, are business opportunities really wide open here in Dallas for the minority businessmen? I would say so. Uh, everyone is not really cut out to be a businessman. It is our job to find that particular person who has the entrepreneurial juices one of my favorite sayings, and to put this type of person into business, to assist him in any way that we can. This is part of a realignment program that was uh, announced in 1968 when the company took a $56 million loss to realign its facilities in, change, in view of the changing um, pattern of the livestock industry and so forth. Do you know of any other plants that will be closed? Today, San Antonio is being announced and um, the uh, beef boning plant, breaking plant in Chicago. And this concludes the realignment program that was announced. Was this realignment uh, as a result of the general state of the economy or simply a company policy? Well, it's in view of the changing livestock patterns, and uh, we uh, stopped to think that uh, starting back in 68, we have closed the plants along the so-called river, St. Paul, Omaha, Kansas City, St. Louis, um, now Fort Worth. The plants are being built out in western Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California. There's no different than the turn of the century when Swift, Timer, and Cudahy came from the East Coast out to Chicago, and the Chicago Yards were established.
the second paragraph of your, of your statement deals with the conversion of Texas Instruments to a stable, non-defense oriented company, as your statement puts it. Uh, is that is that the issue, really? This is really the issue to us. On April 15th last year, we went to them with uh, stockholders and employees and asked them to begin this conversion. This would be necessary if these layoffs, if for layoffs not to have to occur in the future. They told us, sorry, no thank you. We're going to do it the way we want to do it. And so I think they're responsible for it. This is what the board of directors told us. Now you also say you're taking down your pickets today as of noon. Do you really honestly believe that your group resulted, uh, that your group's action resulted in the, if it was, the decision not to lay off people and that you have any power toward the company policy? After we started leafleting at Wednesday at 4 p.m., until 10 p.m. that night, we left that office. We had two lines ringing constantly. The International Union of Electrical Workers had two different phones, two different switchboards, lines ringing constantly from employees calling them and are still ringing when I walked up here. Um, the employees out there are upset. People that are in the regular Dallas community have called us, and they know what the effect is going to be if these people are laid off. After taking nine hours yesterday to decide the guilt of David Burton Jr. in the February 11th shooting death of Mrs. Myrtle Wesley, the eight-man, four-woman jury in Judge R.T. Scales' court assessed the sentence of death. This is the fifth such sentence set down in Dallas County this year. Prosecuting attorney John Stauffer was surprised. Well, I, I was surprised in this sense. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised, uh, very glad for such a verdict. This is the verdict we wanted. This is the verdict we hoped for, prayed for. Uh, we think it's the only proper verdict in this case. Uh, however, I must admit that uh, uh, it isn't very easy to get the death penalty uh, anymore. It seems uh, that uh, people don't want to give it if they possibly can help it. Uh, this jury was particularly qualified on the death penalty. They said they could give it if they thought it was the proper case. and. Uh, they were out nine hours on guilt. When it took them nine hours on guilt, then we, our hopes went down, to be honest with you. We thought that if it took them nine hours to find the man guilty, that we didn't have much chance of getting the death penalty. When the sentence was returned, the courtroom was quiet. Burton didn't make a sound. An appeal is automatic in all death penalty cases. For Channel 8 News on the Move, this is Jess Brown. We stand uh, ready to respond with additional aircraft carrier presence over there if uh, the situation demands it, as it appeared to a few days ago when, in a matter of uh, a very short time, the John F. Kennedy was sent over there, uh, adding a third carrier. We have uh, the supporting destroyers and uh, fleet auxiliaries that are needed uh, in proper proportion uh, for those ships over there. Admiral, let's talk about another potential trouble spot, and that would be the Cuban submarine base or alleged submarine bases. Are we prepared to do anything about that? I'm, uh, I can't, uh, I can't give you an answer on that. I'm, uh, sorry. I, uh, feel that the uh, Office of the Secretary of Defense has, has said uh, all that needs to be said on that subject, and I'm not real knowledgeable.
Well, we're going to uh, try to be ready. Uh, of course, we've been working hard, and we've been watching some film on TCU, and uh, they've got a they've got a tremendous team this year, and we've uh, uh, know that we're going to have to uh, play a good game to uh, you know to stay in the ball game. Steve G is an excellent quarterback, and their defense is much improved over what it was last year. So I'm looking forward to be a real good ball game. Chuck, they have a sophomore secondary, and they'll probably play a lot of man-to-man. -man. Are you ready for that? I think we are. We, Like Bill said, we've seen a lot of films on them, and uh, uh, we've worked pretty hard on it. We had a real good week of, of practices, I think. We had a lot of enthusiasm, and I think everyone's really looking forward to the first uh, conference game. What do you do to get your team up for a game like TCU that's been beaten by your team 11 games in a row? Well, this team hasn't been beaten by uh, TCU. TCU hasn't been beaten by this team. Every team is a different team, and this is a different game, a different year, and different circumstances. You don't look at a winning streak then? No, I have no stock in them and have not mentioned it to the team in any shape, form, or fashion. We have a, a something like 11-game winning streak, 11 or 12-game winning streak going on them. And I, to, to be truthful, I'd hate to be the one to break it. I'd like to go another 13 games straight. You were at Fort Worth the first two years the club was there, of course, and this last year. Is it, is it a fair question to ask uh, where you'd rather play and which league you'd rather play? Well, I think uh, the Central League's a uh, hustling league. It's uh, the younger players than in uh, the American League. Uh, it's a lot faster, and uh, it's real good hockey. It's, uh, they're both uh, good leagues. It's hard to say one is a little bit older and they have older players in it, and uh, the Central League is uh, younger players and it's faster. So it's, uh, it's they're both good hockey leagues. Uh, Fort Worth has the better weather, of course, and uh, you play a little golf, and it's a little more enjoyable than playing up where it's uh, snow all the time. Bob is one of the few players on the Fort Worth team who has been around a few years. Uh, what do you see different under the new regime of Ned Harkness and uh, whose system, is, of course, is filtering down to you people and Doug Barkley? I think uh, the uh, stress is more skating uh, is the biggest thing. Uh, his workouts aren't as long as, uh, say, before when you used to practice, come to training camp, you'd be on the ice for two hours, where here it's an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and a half. But you're moving all the time, you're skating uh, continually. You're between drills, you're skating all the time. No, I, I really don't see that personally. Now, I'm answering this question personally. I feel that if the women of our country know they're needed, they will respond in any number that's necessary. Uh, it's even though if you if certain bills pass and it looks like then we would have to be drafted i think our congress would take a look at this i think our people would look at it very clearly well do you see this as successful as practice for example in israel well i would like to tell you i've just had a visit from the director of the israeli women's corps and they do not go out and fight they are trained to carry a rifle it is there it's possible for them maybe to be called upon to do this because they do have a smaller country they have problems manpower wise that we don't have in our country but they don't every day carry a rifle and go out and fight this is something that we've not really gotten the true picture of from their country well senator tower is the chairman of the senate campaign committee and in this role, he has done a fantastic job of raising money for, <coughs> for all Senate candidates. Uh, I have received a larger sum of money, uh, and I don't know the exact amount, but I have received a larger sum of money, I'm told, than any other Senate candidate. That comes from the fact that the money that went to the big gala dinner in Washington, which was a major fundraising effort by the party, that many of those monies that came from Texas were earmarked for the Bush campaign. They said, I'll buy a ticket, to, I'll give this money, but I want it to go to George Bush. And so I'm told that that's why I get that. As I understand the way it works, uh, leaving out earmarked monies, then the other monies are divided between, on a formula basis, between the key races. So I think these attacks on Senator Tower, that he's favoring one area over another, will prove to be ill-founded. environment 
in fact, is good. It provides diversity of opportunity for people to do, uh, do their own thing and whatever that thing is. Uh, the urban environment in a megalopolis uh, can be a good one. That's not the thing to be feared. The thing to be feared are, are the bad air that we get, the uh, lack of park open space, uh, the, the poor treatment of our water systems, and, uh, and all these other environmental problems. So, and noise, too. Uh, all these are created when we don't manage properly. And we can get bad air in a small city, and we can get poor development in a small city just as we can in a large one. How does the future look then, and as far as environmental management is concerned? Are you afraid for the future? No, I'm very optimistic. Uh, of course, I think that in the next uh, uh, 20 to 40 years, that we'll find it very, very difficult to manage our environment. Hi, I'm Carl Mayo. Mondale, glad to know you. I do uh, a little television work, and my, some of my friends and my bosses have been complaining about the glare on my head lately. Is there anything you can do for me? Well, we sure can. You know, women have been camouflaging themselves for years. Women have had a browsing hurdle. We might as well go ahead. This is the beginning of the men's liberation movement. Well, that's sort of different, isn't it? There you are. Now, this is our Lee Park special here. You can get your Frisbee, go down to Lee Park, eat your fr fried beans, and just do anything you want to do with this one here. Well, that's a little too much, I'm afraid. My oldest boy would like this, but I'm afraid it's a little too much for me. Right. What else you got? Well, we can uh, give you this one here, this little blonde job here. We have 18 different colors, you know. From well, right. I don't know. I'm not a blonde, really. They say blondes yeah. have more fun, but, well, you know. Here, your hairdresser will know for sure. It doesn't look right. Well, they say let me get something. Have more fun. Well, maybe they do, but let me get try to something a little more to my, my own hair shading here. You can always tell by like. the eyebrows. There you are. Uh, wash that and wear. looks a little bit better. I like that one a little bit more. It's wash and wear. Synthetic wig. Jerome Alexander really got him something here. I like that. I think I'll take it. All righty. Fine. Thanks a lot. I like that. Okay. Maybe this will help me in my job. Happy hair wearing. <laughs>
starvation. Uh, we'll have um, uh, people killing one another, uh, and all. Additional services of some sort, are you anticipating some increased investment? No, this is based entirely on what our operating statement told us uh, when we received it this year on the operations in the Fort Worth Metropolitan Exchange. How much money will this involve? Well, it'll be approximately four and a half million dollars, and this amounts to about 11.8 percent increase in annual revenues over 1969. And I would not be able to, to uh, tell you whether there are any uh, scheduled for a shutdown in this area or not. As you confirmed this morning, our aircraft purchases for defense is at its lowest level since the 1930s. And yet the F-111F is uh, reported to be the best of the series, and now funds are unavailable for its purchase. Will the Air Force get the F? I believe almost certainly it will, yes although the final action, of course, rests with the Congress. Do you think the Congress is going to vote your way? Yes. Uh, in the, uh, from an engineering standpoint, suitable. From a geological standpoint, suitable. And uh, which would be suitable when the economics of the disposal of so much solid waste is involved. The post office um, subcommittee of the House of Representatives Post Office Civil Service uh, Committee, at my request, is investigating postal operations in several areas in Texas. Uh, I've had good reason to believe that Washington postal officials have decided to make Texas the target uh, of the most cost-cutting and service-reducing experiments in the post office department for all over the country. I mailed out the notices last Tuesday. They did not get the notices that I sent them until about a week later. Uh, that's my reaction to that. <laughs> and all of them were notified, and all of them were given the same notice, but some of them didn't get their mail. <laughs> Arlington received a welcome economic vitamin shot today with the announcement of the Vantage Company Six Flags Business Park. The 500-acre site is adjacent to Six Flags Amusement Park. It fronts here on the north side of Highway 80 along the west side of 360 with the Dallas-Fort Worth Turnpike on the north. The park will include such things as high and low-rise office buildings, research and technology facilities, motor hotels, high-rise hotels, office warehousing facilities, manufacturing plants, the major shopping center, along with the multifamily townhouse complex. The luncheon announcement of the reputed $500 million development came from Vantage President John Hewlett, Arlington Mayor Tom Vandegrift, and Duncan McFarland, Senior Vice President of the Southwestern Home Office of Prudential Insurance Company in Houston. Prudential will furnish the original financing on the first phase of the project. Quite an economic boost to Arlington and to the entire Mid-Cities area. Art Sinclair, Channel 8 News on the Move, Arlington.
the most simplified form because this has always had some opposition, but um, this is a very simple form, and um, while the Equal Rights Amendment has been passed twice before by the Senate, it has always carried the Hayden Rider, which uh, simply removes equality from the amendment. Well, I think a lot of people feel that we already have equal rights. Uh, what really d d is it going to accomplish? Well, women do not have uh, any fundamental right uh, to protection of the laws under the Constitution. It's one of the big voids in the Constitution and should have been remedied long ago. There is no statement in the Constitution excepting women. There's nothing setting them apart, but they have never been specifically named. Now, there are people who say that Amendment Number 5 and Amendment 14 and uh, Title Seven of the Civil Rights Law uh, grants women equal rights, but the Supreme Court has never recognized these decisions as applying to women. Every, um, every Air Force installation around the world is being subjected to careful scrutiny in the, in the light of declining Air Force budgets to, to uh, decide which among those installations we're going to have to shut down for, for economy reasons. And uh, those air bases and installations in Texas are no exception. Mr. Sorrell, why do you need the increase in rates? Well, recently we received our operating statement for the year 1969, and looking back over the past 10 years, we see a steady deterioration of our earnings here in Fort Worth and Arlington. Does this have anything to do with the increased service that you've had to install in the area? We've made numerous investments in new plant, buildings, switching equipment, and the necessary items in order to provide continuing service to our customers here in Fort Worth and Arlington. So yes, it does depend upon this if we continue our service at the level we're providing now. Fort Worth uh, constitutes one of the large uh, population concentrations. In this area then, uh, Dallas and Fort Worth have large uh, semi-rural areas uh, into which the populated area must uh, uh, transport solid waste generated in the city limits. One of the large problems in the Dallas-Fort Worth area then will be the acquisition of suitable sites. Today I'd like to make uh, two things very clear. First, I'm not implying any criticism of the Texas employees of the post office department or of their supervisors. Uh, my concern and this investigation that I have asked to be launched are aimed at the policy making level of the post office department. Uh, secondly, of course, I'm not opposed to efficiencies or cost reducing uh, operations in postal um, department, but I am opposed to Texas being used as the area that experimentation is done for just cutting costs when service is already at as low a level as it is.
City Council does not agree to the complete rate increase. Will you have to